السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس دس از احمد حسین فرام انگلش ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ایس ایم بی قائد اعظم پبلک اسکول ہائر سیکنڈری سیکشن سو مائی اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر ونس اگین بیک اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس آ نیو ٹاپک دیٹ از دا سالیٹری ریپر نو ڈاؤٹ اٹ از ون آف دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ پوائنٹس آف آر سیکنڈری ایئر انگلش پوائٹری سیکشن اینڈ انڈیڈ اٹ از ریٹرن بائی دا پوائٹ ولیم ورڈس ورتھ مائی اسٹوڈنٹس Uh, no doubt William Wordsworth is called the poet of nature and uh, he has presented the beautiful the picture of a beautiful highland lass in his poem uh, the solitary reaper and you can observe on your screen uh, the picture of this girl and uh, indeed it is the most important character of uh, William Wordsworth in this poem and who is singing and reaping in the fields so my students before proceeding forward uh, let's discuss the clear objectives of this uh, poem and no doubt you can observe that uh, the first and the foremost objective is to comprehend the stanzas and later on the second objective is to enhance the vocabulary as you all know that while going through uh, this poem uh, surely uh, the new vocabulary words will be the part of our vocabulary bank and also at the end the third objective of this video lecture is to analyze the central theme is to uh, analyze the central idea of the poem so my students let's proceed forward and uh, you can observe the picture of uh, william wordsworth on your screen and uh, no doubt at the he, he this this poet william wordsworth is known as the poet of nature and actually he visited many european countries and his residence in france enriched his experiences thus uh, throughout uh, his life there the love of nature led him towards the love of humanity and ultimately he wrote most of his poems on nature and natural sceneries therefore uh, the lots of and the bundles of uh, stanzas are indeed based on the nature and the natural scenes that's why he is also known as the poet of nature my students so let's proceed forward and indeed this is the first stanza of our poem uh, in which the poet says behold her single in the field yon solitary highland lass reaping and singing by herself stop here or gently pass alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain oh listen for the well profound is overflowing with the sound my students uh, these lines of a stanza uh, clearly depicts the picture of that highland lass which, uh, which is seen by the poet as alone as a as an alone girl and uh, he saw that girl in the field around the mountainous area of the scotland and that's why he calls her highland lass uh, my students uh, let me clear here one thing that scotland is generally uh, is geographically divided into the two uh, portions and first one is the highland and the second one is the lowlands and uh, the highlands uh, the, and there are the highlands is the basically the mountainous region yes uh, highland is the mountainous region of scotland and the girl uh, is found there in the fields or uh, around the mountainous area uh, around the mountainous area of that scotland uh, country so that's why he calls her the solitary highland lass actually he stops on hearing the song of highland girl in a field and no doubt he is deeply impressed by the 
pathetic touches of her song so he wants to hear her in order to enjoy its melody and uh, he feels uh, melancholy in the song as well and she was singing in the deep valley but her voice was ringing up all around the place and it seemed to the poet that the whole valley was echoing with the soft touches of her voice no doubt uh, that's why he at the end of this stanza says oh listen for the well profound is overflowing with the sound indeed it seemed to the poet the whole valley was echoing with the soft touches of her voice so my students uh, this was uh, the comprehension and this was the explanation of this first stanza and now let's move towards the second one here uh, the poet compares the voice of that highland lass with two beautiful birds one is nightingale and the other one is cuckoo bird that's why he says no nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among arabian sands so here in the first four lines the poet compares and he praises the voice of highland girl who was singing in the field of a deep valley he thinks that he has never heard such a beautiful song with such great melody that's why he thinks her song is sweeter than the sweet notes of a nightingale as they diligent the band of a weary travelers resting at the oasis in the arabian desert yes moreover the poet further says a voice so thrilling never was heard in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebrides my students here the poet considers that the voice of the girl is thrilling as the voice of a cuckoo bird indeed the voice of a cuckoo bird when disturbs the silence of the seas in the islands located far away in the west coast of scotland it announces the advent of the spring season to the inhabitants of that region well the quality of the girl's voice is also just like a cuckoo bird because it can also convey a message of sweetness and beauty so my students in this way the poet has compares uh, the sweet melody of solitary reaper with these two birds nightingale and the cuckoo bird and here uh, while comparing the sound the beautiful voice of that girl with the cuckoo bird the poet has uh, uh, described the hybrids uh, and uh, the hybrid is is required to define that it is indeed uh, uh, these are the uh, islands basically my students uh, these are the islands located far away in the western coast of uh, scotland and uh, according to the poet that uh, the voice also breaks the silence of that sea uh, according to the poet regarding the voice of cuckoo bird and uh, at the end he compares that voice with the uh, beautiful uh, melody of solitary reaper my students moreover here uh, you can observe on your screen uh, this beautiful bird and uh, this is nightingale and you can also see uh, the beauty of that bird and also its melodious sound and mel melodious songs are also compared with that girl and moreover here it is the cuckoo bird and uh, this is also Uh, another beautiful bird which is compared with that girl so my students uh, later on now in this third 
stanza of the poem here the poet says will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for all unhappy far off things and battles long ago or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be may be again my students uh, well uh, the girl was singing in a gaelic it is a celtic language which is still spoken in the highlands of scotland and the harbridges and uh, william wordsworth mm, was not aware about that language so he was unable to understand the theme of the girl's song that's why the poet couldn't understand the actual theme of the song but he only guessed about the theme through his wisdom and knowledge and he thought probably the said words were coming out from her mouth in the memory of some sad and unhappy events of the past perhaps she was singing her song uh, about the old battle she was singing that song uh, about the old battle fought by her for fathers it might be the girl was uh, unhappy on account of any trouble loss or sorrow in her everyday life therefore she was singing a tragic song hence hence my students uh, the poet has uh, clearly uh, thought and a uh, percept uh, he it is his perception because uh, indeed he couldn't understand the actual theme of the song that's why he uh, it is his perception and he guesses he guesses uh, about the theme through his wisdom and knowledge that probably it was uh, something about uh, the unhappy uh, the song was about the sad and unhappy event of the past so my students uh, furthermore let's proceed forward and uh, this is the last stanza of our poem and where the poet says whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more my students here the poet has clearly describes the intensity of that song uh, about its melody about its sweetness that's why the poet thinks that a good music can move the heart and soul and as he was hearing the song of that solitary reaper and with the beauty of its music though he remains unable to capture the theme of her song so he left that place and could not hear hear the voice of that girl again but he feels that the music and the melody of the song will live in his heart forever that's why that's why my students the poet says and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more so my students so this was uh, all about uh, that poem and uh, indeed the beautiful melody and the music of the song supplemented by the natural scene in the valley uh made the poet write and compose this beautiful poem and now at the end my students uh we are going to discuss uh, the central idea of this poem and no doubt the central idea can be uh, summarized that the ha as a, as a happy events and we consider happy events as the source of joy yes this was the very uh, this was indeed the happy event for the poet and uh, that's why 
it became the source of joy for him and also he is trying to convey the message that such sort of lovely experiences are preserved in the memory forever and uh, that's why uh, it is also uh, stressfully it is also stressed by the poet in the last three lines in which uh, he clearly exp uh, explains his uh, emotions and feelings so my students uh, hopefully all the objectives are achieved now uh, first of all we discussed and uh, and we explained uh, the stanzas and hopefully the new words of this poem or uh, have become the part of your vocabulary bank as well and now at the end we sum up and we concluded the whole poem with this central theme as well and uh, hope all of you have comprehend this poem as well and wish you all the best of luck my students thank you so much